the story, it challenges us with disturbing and bizarre images. And it says, well, why don't you try to understand this? See if you can understand this. What does it really mean to escape from Egypt? Does it mean escaping from your inner pharaoh? What does it really mean to part the Red Sea? So these, these stories are told, uh, any myth is a dramatic retelling of an underlying reality that can't be expressed rationally, right? So the atheists say everything can be expressed rationally. For example, you know that the earth is burning up. You can tell that because sometimes things get warmer and sometimes things get colder. You can also tell that when things get colder, that's obviously because the earth is burning up, because the sun is melting the glaciers and the glaciers are raising the temperature. You can also tell, of course, that to be fair to everyone, children change sex. You know that, don't you? And you can tell that men can compete as women and women can compete as men. This is all human confusion because we trust our senses and we trust our mind and the mind just, it doesn't work real good. We're very cunning, but we aren't very smart human beings. And that's the message of the Bible. And so if you look at um, Moses, sorry, Moses Moses was, they tried to, the Egyptians tried to kill him all of his life. The Egyptians tried to kill him. He didn't have any trouble with the Egyptians because God was on his side. He had trouble with the Jews because the Jews were always saying, who the hell do you think you are? So that's, that the, the, all the Old Testament is the story of atheists, really, saying, who the hell do you think you are? So when, when you're talking about the Bible, right? What I mean, in the lessons in the Bible, isn't part of the problem is that your people translated it from ancient Hebrew to Latin to Greek and all these other languages, and then eventually to English. Like a lot's lost along the way, right? And a lot is open to interpretation. Like a lot of what we're talking about in these myths and stories that people take as factual occurrences, they probably were some sort of uh there's some sort of a lesson in the myth some sort of allegory there's 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 things about these stories that probably have hints of truth but isn't it hard to kind of decipher it all oh, if that's you a, can't speak the mother language that's a very good question so one uh, uh, first uh, let me ask you okay i'm going to tell you a story okay okay these two octopuses walk into a a, a, a laundromat okay see that's what a myth is I said two octopuses walk into a laundromat, and you didn't say, wait a second, octopuses can't walk and they wouldn't be in a laundromat. Well, I thought about it, but I'm being polite. <laughs> so what you said is, yeah, tell me more. I'm okay. well, hoping there's a good joke. Okay, well, I'll get to that. But it's the <laughs> same thing with the, the Bible is really two octopuses walk into a laundromat. So I'm going to tell you a story. I want you to suspend your disbelief because there's something in this story you might get a kick out of. Mm -hmm. You might, And you might there might be some wisdom in it. There might, yes, and might. No, but if you listen as you would to a story, which the Bible is, it's a myth, rather than to a, a factual retelling, you might get a kick out of it. Now, as far as a translation goes, I can read the Bible in Hebrew. I learned, started learning when I was 40. It's, it's easy language. And there are a lot of mistranslations. Uh, but the, the, the main point is not the mistranslations, because there are some pretty good English translations, too. But the main point is saying that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. So what do you think the Bible is? Do you think the Bible is a bunch of very wise people got together and they formed these stories to sort of illustrate the folly of mankind and how one needs to have like a moral compass and guiding principles that are set in stone and that you have these rules to live your life in a moral and just way and that'll make for a better society? Like, where do you, what do you think the Bible actually is? Well, a, a friend of mine, a rabbi, was, uh, uh, was a reform rabbi, was applying to get into an orthodox uh, yeshiva, an orthodox uh, college, and he's a reform rabbi. So the guy says, he says, you have very good credentials and you're very well learned. Do you think the Bible is literally the work of God? The rabbi says, no. So the guy says, well, is it possible? The rabbi says, yes. The guy says, okay, you're in. <laughs> right, so the Dennis Prager, you know, mm -hmm. who um, I'm crazy about, said the other day. He said, you know, I, I don't believe in the Torah, the Jewish Bible, because of God. He said, I believe in God because of the Torah. 
So if you read the Torah, the Jewish Bible, and the Christian Bible is just an extension of that, you say, my God, this is incredible wisdom. This goes back to the beginning of time. People who've tried to figure out everything, and right. they, they didn't have the language that we have, but they had the language that they had, and this was thousands of years of experience progressed and compressed into a myth. So we know that this is true because like uh, liberals have always been in love with the myths, especially Jews, with the myths of other cultures, right? We say how beautiful it is that this culture has that myth, that the Haydn Indians say the world was formed by a large beaver, and when the beaver slapped his tail like that, it made the oceans, and when the blah, 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 it's a gorgeous myth. Mm -hmm. Nobody says of that myth, wait a second, you can't have a beaver that big, right? That's what I would say. Yeah, okay. I would step in and go, hey, man. Yeah. <laughs>